I'm going to take a look at uh, some damage I did to my CNC because I didn't do the maintenance I know I should be doing. <laughs> Let's put it that way, I guess. What I did is I've been running my CNC for about maybe two or three months since I lubricated it, which isn't bad if you don't use it that often. But lately I've been running this one quite a bit and simply neglected to do the kind of lubrication that I should have done. So what I'm going to recommend, I'm going to change my recommendations on this uh, lubricating this Shark CNC. This is an HD4. Especially in here. Okay. Which is the Z-axis. What happened was um, the other day I was doing a project with my lathe and it started out fine like this one is and then I took a little more off and I was making a ravioli roller, a new project. And when I came back, after it started, I came back and this is what was left hanging on here. Everything was gone. I mean, it just chewed it up to nothing. And I said, oh, I messed up the program. Must have. Because you can see how deep the cut is on the Z-axis there. See how it went all the way down in? All the way, way down in. So it cut it basically in half. I mean, it chewed it to, there was nothing left. So, I said, well, I'll go back to the drawing board. In the interim, I had a, a lady that ordered a praying hands in a six inch size, so I made some smaller ones. And when I was doing it, whether you see the focus on this or not, you see right there that this is the first part of the praying hands. These are the collars and the fingers. And if you look right in here, you can actually see some of the ridges. See, if I can cast some shadows on that so you can see it. See those ripples? That tells me that the z-axis is starting to act up. When it does, it's not uniform or smooth like that, that tells me you're missing some steps. And that's basically what started happening. And then once it started locking up, missing steps, what that does is allows it to change its z position. So instead of the z position being up here, it thinks it's down here someplace. And if you look down here in my aluminum bed, you can actually see a finger machine down in there. See it? That's actually a finger that goes with this praying hands. So it lost its z position because it locks up, and it pushed it down into the table, so it carved my table. So I won't be able to use that portion of the table to clamp with anymore but the whole table itself is still good. I can replace just these two pieces if I need to. Now, and then you can see that it actually cut right through here. So it made the next carving lowered. And when I came out and saw that, I stopped it. You can see there how it, it cut through. So it's lost its Z position. And the reason it does that is basically the bearings get bound up in here and it skips steps. Or up here in the top, there's a screw that you need to check periodically to make sure it's not loose. And it's not. I mean, you can't move that independently from here. One of the easy ways to do that, to find out if that's moving, is you just run this into a hard stop up here, which I'll do here shortly. If I do my Z out, I'm gonna slow this down so it doesn't make so much noise when it hits. Okay, right in there, and I'll slow it down a little bit more to slow, and you'll hear it. You'll bottom out. Here. Now, if it, if that nut was loose, instead of going da 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 da, you'd actually this motor would keep spinning, and this would just go up there and set. So the nut itself is not loose. So that tells me that it. Uh, Increase my speed and bring it down. And if I take it down there till it hits, it's going to jam that through. So if you want to test it on the other end, just take that nut off and take your tooling off, and this will not hit the bottom plate. So you can do it that way. But that's what it's telling me. So what I need to do is clean this and lube it, clean this and lube it. And while I'm doing that, I'll also do these and the bottom rail. So if you use this, I would say 40 to 50 hours a week, um, I would do it 
once every two weeks or once every month before you have a catastrophic failure like I had here. So just keep that in mind. Uh, if you don't know how to do it, you can go back to the maintenance video on the HD4. I have one just for the HD4, I have one for the HD5, and then I have one that combines both of them together. So that'll tell you how to maintain it. So that's, if you don't maintain it with stepper motors, which is this, what we have up here, stepper motors do not generally have feedback. You can get it with feedback. Feedback tells me then that this is not moving. So it an error out and fault. Uh, because we don't have that, it'll just keep running. So if it loses steps, which it does if it binds up because of a lack of lubrication or a bearing failure, then you will tear things up. Cut things up, I should say, because nothing is really destroyed. So other than you know one of these plates and I have a couple of those extra in stock anyway so another lesson make sure you do your lubrication or you could have a catastrophic failure like that or like this so take care have fun with your CNC and keep it lubricated